one of the most important things for, for, for all documents and transactions is legal capacity or what we call local standard in law, a position upon which to stand, right? You cannot want to make claim or enter into a promissory arrangement if you do not have the capacity or footing to stand. A lot of people in Trinidad and Tobago seem to have the opinion that because their uncle owned property or their grandmother, cousin, or even because they live there, that that is sufficient for them to be recognized in law as having the authority to enter into an agreement. And it is not. This is so important. I'm, I'm asking juniors when you're drafting, please make sure if you are drafting an agreement that the vendor can actually sell. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. And because the purchaser could buy, but can the vendor actually sell? Because you could draft a beautiful sale agreement and it can become voidable to the extent of the vendor's lack of legal capacity, lack of title power. Oh, oh, oh. And we see this all the time in real estate. For all the real estate agents who are agents, on, real estate it, agents we, that think about the, think of the amount of time it takes. It takes between three to six months to close a, a, a deal. You know, it is at the end of six months, everything going hunky dory, and then when they check, the person does not have the 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 the, the, the capacity legally <laughs> to sell you yeah. the property or I rent you the property. Evening. I don't know if technical can help me. I wanted us even to show you all, Doc. I wanted to show you all. I wanted to show you all some sale agreements I have seen in my time. <laughs> and the, no, I'm going to show them. I wouldn't show the names of the persons preparing, but we'll look at the do's and don'ts. And if technical could let me know, can I share my screen if I can find them? Because I really want to show you all some bad sale agreements and some good sale agreements and i want to show some very serious issues and errors i have seen made um and some mm, some common errors because i've actually had to send back several of these and show why these things were wrong or what is the issues here Right now, one particular sale agreement, and I'll give this example because I, I I can't pull it up right now. This sale agreement, the attorney took instructions from her client, and I, I spoke to her after. She told me how. So in the first paragraph, where she's supposed to establish, as I said, capacity, because remember, sale agreement is a contract. You have to first identify your vendor, their name the address, their occupation, and herein after referred to as the vendor. You do the same for your purchaser, herein after you recite them properly, reference them properly. Now, when you reference them property, properly, your next paragraph is going to say, whereas. You see the whereas? You need to have a nice recital or a story of telling how is the vendor the vendor? That's the most important part of a sale agreement, just as it is in a title document. Whereas the vendor, by virtue of either the title document before it, where they bought and they have a bona fide deed of conveyance or a deed of gift or any proper title document that gives them guaranteed assurance no there are sale agreements that you can enter where the vendor doesn't have title document yet or they may have an encumbrance in title they may have a mortgage it is perfectly fine for a vendor whose property is currently mortgaged to enter in a transaction with the consent of the mortgagee Three. But you have to put that there. You cannot just create the sale agreement and leave out the mortgage. The mortgage affects title because somebody else currently has that 
legal capacity and power. Now, law is so beautiful that there are provisions made for that. A mortgagee can give a mortgage a consent to sell. It This may happen again. You may have a lease interest as the vendor, right? You have to recite that you are in a lease and there is a head lease before it. And mm -hmm. you have a lessor. And you are assigning a part of your lease. Some people have 199 years. And they're given 99 years to McCasey Paul. You have to say that. You, have, you can't just leave out HDC or leave out the head lease that exists. And I'm here I'm talking to juniors. These are things that you need to do to draft properly. That is why you should never be drafting a sale agreement without a search. You should never be drafting a sale agreement with the instructions from your client. Your client can lie. It may be a, an outright lie for spite or it may be a, a, a genuine misconception that they have. But you can't say, well, yeah, my client says she have a deed. What's the deed number? By, and you're writing, whereas by virtue of DE, you and look for a mortgage. You, you, you in look to see if the client is actually a joint tenant with somebody else. I have seen this. I have seen where the vendor, prominent, the vendor had no mortgage. It wasn't his name. But when I did the searches, the vendor is in joint tenancy with his wife. He and the wife went through a divorce. There was no settlement. She didn't say... She, she is still the joint tenant with the husband. He does not have his capacity as shared. Joint tenants are not individual owners. They cannot transact by themselves. <laughs> These are intricate things that need to be known. part of the sales agreement. Part of the sales now, agreement. Now, I want to. I know. I know. I know. We are. We have so much sales agreement. I think we might have to have a part too because uh um, Daniel wants to be on the seat, definitely said that we can't be yeah, here. But sales agreement is a key of his as well because it really yeah. affects the transaction later on in conveyance. Correct. Right. So so one of the things I wanna I just wanna go to some of the questions that we would have had sure. previously, right? Sure. Um and, and one of them starts with Miss Jennifer Collins ask um can a written sales agreement be honored if it is not drafted by a legal profession if not why that's a big it depends i could i could almost no. i could almost preempt that question it depends it depends um, if it is binding once an correct. agreement is sound right it is sound correct. It is written, it is sound, there's provisions for it in law, it is valid, and it can it can be substantiated, it's fine. It's very rare that you're going to find a non-legal <laughs> That's exactly my able to do that. But, and I'm saying, uh, good evening, Mr. Duke. But uh, if the agreement is sound, if the terms and conditions are, can can be upheld, if it, it is it is legally binding, once it has all the features required for it to be binding, it is an agreement. Right. And 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 to 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 kind of add to what Ms. Daniel is saying, the all the things that are legally binding that has to do the has to do the agreement needs to be checked. Like it, and, and the only way to really check that is by going to a professional.